Hi, I'm Annie, and our new work studies multi-agent interactions between robots and other non-stationary agents, such as humans. So before I talk about robots, let's first think about how people interact with each other. Specifically in this hockey example, the player on the left here is currently aiming from the right side of the goal. But the next time he approaches the goal again, he might pick a different strategy. For example, he might aim from the left side instead. And of course, this makes the goalie's job really difficult because this means that he has to deal with the different strategies of the opposing team during each offensive play. And so now similarly, when robots interact with humans or other robots, these other agents are non-stationary. They update their behavior in response to the robot. And so prior work for handling these multi-agent interactions would explicitly model the low-level policy of the other agent. But people can interact with each other with little to no effort. And they do this by keeping a high level representation of the other person. And so we recognize that much like in human human interaction, robots can also capture other agents with these high level representations that change over time, which we refer to as their latent strategies. For example, consider these two robots playing air hockey. The ego agent on the left is a reinforcement learning robot that's tasked with blocking the incoming shot while the other agent on the right is a rule-based robot that dynamically changes its strategy. And so the ego agent only observes the Y position of the puck as well as its own position. And to construct a non-stationary problem setting, the X position of the puck isn't provided to the ego agent and instead has to be inferred from its earlier interactions. And so the ego agent can move its paddle up and down the X axis while the other agent has different strategies which correspond to aiming in different directions. Each trial lasts for a fixed number of time steps and we define an interaction to be the resulting sequence of states, actions, and rewards of the agent. After each trial, the other agent will then select a new strategy based on the previous interaction. And importantly, the ego agent never observes the strategies or the actions of the other agent. So because naive reinforcement learning algorithms assume that the environment is stationary, they don't actually model the changing environment. Um, and so when faced with a non-stationary agent, such as this one, the RL agent will learn to just pick one mode to block, and here it blocks on its left side. So for the robot to be able to adapt to the other agent, it first needs to model how its behavior is changing. While prior work focused on estimating the policy of the other agent and how that changes, our approach instead learns a high level representation of the other agent, which can change over time. To learn this representation from data, we train an encoder that takes in the previous interaction and predicts the next interaction's latent strategy. Then from this representation, the decoder reconstructs the rewards and transitions of the next interaction. And the whole point of this latent representation Z is to capture what the other agent will do next. So we train this encoder decoder model to maximize the log likelihood of the rewards and the transitions that were seen across all of the interactions. And so having learned a model of the other agent, we can now train a policy that's conditioned on the predicted latent strategy. This policy will give us different behaviors for different predictions. And so it basically gives the ego agent the ability to react to the other agent. Now to recap, during training, our approach first trains an encoder-decoder model to learn a representation of the other agent. Then we train a policy conditioned on this representation so that the agent can, re can react to the other agent. Now putting all this together, during a new interaction, the encoder predicts the other agent's latent strategy. The EO agent then carries out the policy conditioned on this prediction, and this process repeats. So we call this whole framework learning and influencing latent intent, or LILI. We first considered a simple naviga navigation task here with the EO agent represented by teal and the other agent represented by gray. The EO agent always starts each, each interaction at T1, while the other agent sits somewhere along the shaded blue circle. 
And during each interaction, the ego agent needs to capture the other agent as quickly as possible. But it never observes the position of the other agent and only receives reward based on how far they are from each other. The other agent is only allowed to move between interactions and specifically it moves either clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on whether the ego agent's final position is inside or outside of the circle. Here we visualize the trajectories taken by the ego agent in teal, where the teal circle represents the final position of the agent, and each frame corresponds to a single interaction. So this first policy is trained with soft actor critic, which is a standard reinforcement learning algorithm that doesn't model the other agent. And this policy at convergence moves to the center of the circle in every interaction. And that's because without knowledge of or any mechanism to infer where the other agent is, the center of the circle is where the agent receives the highest reward. In contrast, our method Lily successfully models the other agent's behavior and can capture the other agent in each interaction. But notice that the other agent is captured along this lower part of the circle. If the goal is to reach the other agent as quickly as possible, then ideally the other agent should be positioned at the top of the circle, where the ego agent is closest. Um, so in other words, the ego agent should influence the other agent to move towards that blue region. So instead of simply reacting to the other agent, what we actually want is to learn a policy that can influence its strategy. This influential behavior can be learned by maximizing the long-term rewards across interactions. And this objective naturally motivates the ego agent to act in a way that leads to more desirable future strategies in the other agent. And so now returning to the navigation example, as expected, we see that the Lily agent with influence learns to trap the other agent at that top of the circle. This is where the target is the closest to the ego agent and where it receives the highest rewards. And we see that again here in this plot of the rewards collected during each interaction. Lily with influence almost matches Oracle performance, while Lily without influence earns slightly lower rewards. In this next task simulated in Carla during each interaction, the ego agent, which is controlling the blue car, needs to pass the other agent, which is controlling the tan car. The other agent recognizes that the lane the ego agent passes in is faster, and so it'll merge into this lane during the next interaction. The converged stop actor critic agent changes to the left lane in every interaction, even when the other agent moves to the left lane too, and this results in near collision. Um, on the other hand, Lily correctly anticipates the lane that the other agent will switch to, and it'll switch to the opposite lane accordingly. And because the strategies in this setting are equally rewarding to the ego agent, here Lily without influence results in the same performance as Lily with influence. Finally, we tested our approach in the air hockey game described earlier. So as a reminder, the other agent strikes the puck either to the left, down the middle, or to the right. And after each trial, the other agent will select a new strategy based on the last interaction. Specifically, it always aims away from where the ego agent last blocked. So the ego agent earns plus one reward for blocking the puck. And now let's pretend the robot has an easier time blocking on its left side for some reason. And so it earns plus two reward for blocking shots that come down the left side. And this means that influencing the opponent to aim to the left side more often will lead to higher long-term rewards. So we first trained a policy with soft doctor critic. And again, because it doesn't model the opponent, this agent learns to block only one mode, which is its right side. And near the end of training, it switches to blocking left instead, every time which earns it higher rewards. And here, instead of rewards, we um, plot the success rate over training, and we see that the final policy achieves about a 40% success rate. However, we see that Lily can block a lot more successfully um, than uh, soft actor critic, but it doesn't always get that bonus reward for blocking left, and that's because it's not explicitly trained to influence the other agent's strategy. Lily blocks successfully about 90% of the time. And finally, we look at Lily with influence. 
So this agent, as we can see, can manipulate the other agent to alternate between left and middle shots. And by doing this, it achieves higher overall rewards. So looking at success rate only, we can see that Lily with influence has a similar success rate as Lily without influence. But where we actually see a difference is when we look at how frequently the opponent fires left, middle, and right. Lily with influence leads its opponent to fire left the most often, 41% of the time, while without influence, the distribution over the strategies is uniform. So we tested the policies learned by a soft actor critic and Lily against a human expert. So this human expert follows the same set of strategies as the robot opponent, but here the human has imperfect aim. Um, the soft actor critic agent success rate is 45%, while Lily's is 73%. So to conclude, we can often capture the behavior of non-stationary agents with these high-level representations. And with these representations, the agent can learn to anticipate and influence other agents across repeated interactions. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Annie. Good talk. So I have a question for you. So the question is, when talking about multi-agent setting, are we focusing on collaborative scenario or a competitive scenario or an interaction scenario? Yeah, so this um, framework isn't specific to collaborative or competitive scenarios. Um, we're looking at any um, setting where there are two, two agents interacting with one another. Um, and the nature of the interaction it basically has to be um, encode it in the reward function. So for example, in the point mass navigation task, um, the ego agent is rewarded to capture the other agent. Um, and so in that sense, you can do it as perhaps a competitive scenario. Okay. So if there are no other questions, I will ask one question. Uh, so in the, in the scenario that you are modeling long-term interactions, did the variance of your reinforcement learning updates increase because of the increased time horizon? And if so, then how did you model it? Yeah, it actually did. Um, so for example, in the point mass navigation task, um, oftentimes, uh, especially in, uh, in the middle of training, uh, when it was still trying to capture the other agent to that top of the circle, um, it would sometimes lose track of the other agent. Um, and that's where the rewards would drop again. Um, and essentially one thing that we did try was instead of, um, we essentially, instead of treating it as one long sequence, um, all the interactions as one long sequence, we would um, segment them so that we had, um, uh, I guess, shorter uh, sequences of interactions. Okay. And that still led to that influential behavior, which was nice. 